Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your own home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus will teach you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. Sixth, free language learning audiobooks. Want free access to our huge library of beginner-level audiobooks? Then click the link below. Save the audiobooks to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. In this series, we'll cover daily Japanese conversations to help you learn Japanese expressions for everyday life. First, we'll listen to the dialogue. Try to get a feel for the conversations and don't worry about the words you don't already know. Next comes the dialogue with the text. You can follow along and see any new useful words. The end of the video will be a list of vocabulary followed by the English translations. You can also get the full dialogue study tool for this lesson and hundreds more right now at JapanesePod101.com. Click the link in the description to gain access to the dialogue script, the romanized version, the translated script, and much more to finally master Japanese. Okay, let's get started with the first dialogue. Sayuri kita. Sayuri chan, kochi. 二人はいつもスタバね。なんで？禁煙だし、もがらてがうまい。なるほど。ところで久しぶり秀夫と ところで最近何してる？ずっと論文。今出したばっかり。大変だったよ。ちゃんと出した？うん、ギリギリセーフだった。今ものすごくいい気分。よかった。よかったな。二人はロン文どうした？僕はちゃんとネットで買ったよ
さゆり来たさゆりちゃんこっち二人はいつもスタバねなんで禁煙だしもうからてがうまいなるほどところで久しぶり秀夫とメル久々久々まさか秀夫の真似してるのなかなかいい日本語の先生だしありがとうございますなかなかいい学生だなああ先生のおかげで本当に感謝しています相変わらずね二人はいつ大人になるのかしらところで最近何してるずっと論文今出したばっかり大変だったよちゃんと出したうんギリギリセーフだった今はものすごくいい気分よかったよかったな二人は論文どうした僕はちゃんとネットで買ったよ相変わらず面白くないメルと変わらないそうかももう一回聞くけど二人は論文をちゃんと出した楽勝だった一週間前に出したよマジでうん日本語は大変だったでしょ日本語英語で書いたよずるすぎるフェアじゃないまあね僕も今日出したすごいいい気分だ今週スノボは行く行く私も行くじゃあ決まりだところで陽子はわからない僕もわからない彼女はどこにいるのかしら締め切りは3時今は2時半大丈夫かな陽子に電話してどうしよう。Abbreviation of snowboard. ずるすぎる Too sneaky. 気分 Feeling. まさか Unbelievable. スタバ Starbucks. ところで By the way, 僕 I, masculine. マネ Imitation. Well done. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday live conversation. Click the link in the description to gain access to the dialogue script, the romanized version, the translated script, audio pronunciations, and much more to finally master Japanese. Bye! Welcome to Can Do Japanese by JapanesePod101.com. Mina san, konnichiwa, Kano Kana desu. Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to introduce yourself in Japanese. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Japan. Ken Kobayashi, a passenger sitting next to him, introduces himself by saying, Nice to meet you. I'm Kobayashi. Pleased to meet you. Hajime Mashite. Watashi wa Kobayashi desu. Yoroshiku o n e g a i s h i m a s Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Ready? はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私はリーマークです。よろしくお願いします。Once more with the English translation. はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。Nice to meet you. I'm Kobayashi. Pleased to meet you. はじめまして。私はリーマークです
よろしくお願いします。Nice to meet you. I'm Mark Lee. Pleased to meet you. Let's take a closer look at Mark's response. Do you remember how Mark Lee introduces himself? Nice to meet you. I'm Mark Lee. Pleased to meet you. はじめまして。私はリーマークです。よろしくお願いします。First is the phrase はじめまして。Meaning, nice to meet you. はじめまして。はじめまして。This phrase is usually the first thing someone says when making a self introduction in Japanese. はじめまして。Now let's look at the last part of Mark's response. よろしくお願いします。This literally means, be good to me, please. There is no equivalent in English since the meaning is understood from the context of the situation. In the context of meeting someone for the first time, it translates as, please to meet you. よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。Do you remember how Mark says, I'm Mark Lee? Watashi wa Lee Mark des. First is, Watashi, meaning I. Watashi, Watashi. Next is the particle. Wa. The topic marking particle. Wa. It marks. Watashi. I as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression as for me. Together, it's. Watashi wa. As for me. Watashi wa. Next is Mark Lee's name. Note the name order. First is Mark's family name. D. Lee. D. D. Followed by his given name. Mark. 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 Together, it's. D. Mark. Lee. Mark. D. Mark. In Japanese, the order is family name first, followed by given names. Last is. This. In this case, it's like the am in I am. It's a linking verb. Desu. This. Altogether, it's. Watashi wa Lee Mark desu. This literally means, as for me, Lee Mark am. But it translates as, I'm Mark Lee. Watashi wa Lee Mark desu. The pattern is, Watashi wa name desu. I'm name. Watashi wa name desu. To use this pattern, simply replace the name placeholder with your name. Imagine you're Karen Lee. In Japanese, Ka de m d. Karen d. Say, I'm Karen Lee. Remember Japanese name order, family name first, followed by given name. Ready? Watashi wa D. Karen desu. I'm Karen Lee. Watashi wa D. Karen desu. Now, do you remember how Ken Kobayashi says, I'm Kobayashi? Watashi wa Kobayashi desu. I'm Kobayashi. Watashi wa Kobayashi desu.
The pattern is the same, but Ken Kobayashi uses only his family name. He omits his given name. The pattern is Watashi wa family name desu. I'm family name. Watashi wa family name desu. In Japan, it's common to give only one's family name in a self introduction. Let's practice this pattern with Karen Lee. Drop Karen Lee's first name and say, I'm Lee. Ready? Watashi wa D desu. I'm Lee. Watashi wa D desu. Let's look at some examples of people introducing themselves. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. Hajime maste. Watashi wa Kobayashi desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Hajime maste. Watashi wa Kobayashi desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Hajime maste. Watashi wa Lee Mark desu. よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、私はリーマークです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、私はリーカレンです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、私はリーカレンです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、私は可能かなです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、私は可能かなです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、田中です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして、田中です。よろしくお願いします。Did you notice the last speaker omits? 私は She says, Hajime Tanaka desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Nice to meet you. I'm Tanaka. Pleased to meet you. Hajime Mashite Tanaka desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Tomoko Tanaka omits, Watashi wa, and says only her family name, Tanaka, followed by, desu. When it's clear from context, the speaker often omits the topic in Japanese. In this case, it's clear the speaker is talking about herself. The pattern is Name this. I'm name. Name this. Do you remember my introduction at the start of the lesson? Kano kana desu. I'm kana kano. Kano kana desu. This is shortened in the same way by omitting. You should be aware of this shortcut, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. Name I'm name. name Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, nice to meet you? Hajimemashite. Hajimemashite. And do you remember how to say, pleased to meet you? Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Do you remember the word for I? Watashi. Watashi. And the topic marking particle? Wa. Wa. Do you remember how Mark Lee says his name? Lee Mark. Lee Mark. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, I'm Mark Lee?
。私はリーマークです。私はリーマークです。All together, do you remember how Mark introduces himself? はじめまして。私はリーマークです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私はリーマークです。よろしくお願いします。Finally, do you remember how Ken Kobayashi introduces himself? はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。Let's practice. Imagine your リーカレン Respond to Ken Kobayashi's self introduction. Ready? はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私はリー・カレンです。よろしくお願いします。Listen again and repeat. はじめまして。私はリー・カレンです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私はリー・カレンです。よろしくお願いします。Let's try another. Imagine your 田中智子 Use your family name only in your self introduction. Ready? はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私は田中です。よろしくお願いします。Listen again and repeat. はじめまして。私は田中です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私は田中です。よろしくお願いします。Let's try one more. Imagine your 可能かな Use Japanese name order in your self introduction. Ready? はじめまして。私は小林です。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私は加納かなです。よろしくお願いします。Listen again and repeat. はじめまして。私は加納かなです。よろしくお願いします。はじめまして。私は加納かなです。よろしくお願いします。When introducing yourself as a Japanese learner, use the name or name order with which you'd like to be addressed. For example, you might want to use just your given name. Watashi wa Karen desu. I'm Karen. Or given name followed by family name. Watashi wa Karen Lee desu. I'm Karen Lee. This is perfectly alright. You can feel free to use the name you would like to be called. Welcome to Can Do Japanese by JapanesePod101.com. 皆さんこんにちは、加納かなです
Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to tell someone where you're from in Japanese. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Japan. Ken Kobayashi, a passenger sitting next to him, asks him, Mr. Lee, where are you from? Lee san, shushin wa doko desu ka? Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Note, the speakers in this conversation use polite Japanese. Ready? Lee san, shushin wa doko desu ka? Shushin wa New York desu. Once more, with the English translation. Lee san, shushin wa doko desu ka? Mr. Lee, where are you from? I'm from New York. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Ken Kobayashi asks, Mr. Lee, where are you from? Lee san, shushin wa doko desu ka? First is Lee san, Mr. Lee. Lee san. This starts with Mark Lee's family name. Lee. 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 After this is san, a polite suffix attached to a person's name that translates as Mr. in Mark's case. Sa. Mm. San. Note, this suffix can be used with any gender. Together, Lee san. Mr. Lee. Lee san. Next is the word, Shushin. Hometown. Shushin. Shushin. Remember this word because you'll see it again in Mark's response. After this is the particle, wa, the topic marking particle, wa. It marks hometown as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression, as for your hometown. Together, it's, shushin wa, as for your hometown. Shushin wa. Note. The your is understood through context as the speaker is asking a question. Shushin wa. Next is the word. Doko. Where? Doko. Doko. After this is. Des. Here, it's like the is in where is. De. Su. Des. Last is the particle, ka, the question marking particle. Ka. This particle turns the sentence into a question. Altogether, it's Lee san, shushin wa doko desu ka? This literally means, Mr. Lee, as for your hometown, where is? But it translates as, Mr. Lee, where are you from? Lee san. Remember this question. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, I'm from New York? First is, Shushin. Hometown. Shushin. Next is the particle. Wa. The topic marking particle. Wa. It marks hometown as the topic of the sentence. Together, it's. Shushin wa. As for my hometown. Shushin wa. Note. The my is understood through context as the speaker is responding to a question about his hometown. Next is New York. New York. 
ニューヨーク。ニューヨーク。Last is です。In this case, it's like the is in it is. です。Altogether, 出身はニューヨークです。This literally means, as for my hometown, New York is. But it translates as, I'm from New York. 出身はニューヨークです。The pattern is 出身は hometown です。I'm from hometown. 出身は hometown です。To use this pattern, simply replace the hometown placeholder with the name of your hometown. Imagine you're from Sydney. In Japanese, シドニーシドニー Sydney. Say, I'm from Sydney. Ready? I'm from Sydney. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. 出身はニューヨークです。出身はニューヨークです。出身は札幌です。出身は札幌です。出身はシアトルです。出身はシアトルです。出身はロンドンです。出身はロンドンです。出身は長崎です。出身は長崎です。出身はオーストラリアです。出身はオーストラリアです。Did you notice the last speaker says a country name in place of a city name? She says, 出身はオーストラリアです。I'm from Australia. 出身はオーストラリアです。The word 出身 actually has a broader meaning than just one's hometown. You can also use it to talk about your country. This pattern is 出身は home country です。I'm from home country. 出身は home country です。You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use city names. Let's review the key vocabulary. 札幌、札幌、札幌、札幌、シアトル。Seattle. シアトルシアトルロンドンロンドンロンドンロンドン長崎長崎長崎長崎 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say hometown? 出身出身 And the topic marking particle? 和和
Do you remember how to say New York? New York. New York. And do you remember how Mark says, "I'm from New York"? Do you remember how to say where? Doko. Doko. And the question marking particle. Do you remember how Ken Kobayashi asks, "Where are you from?" Do you remember how to say London? London. London. And how to say Seattle? Seattle. Seattle. Do you remember how to say Nagasaki? Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Let's practice. Imagine you're Jack Jones from London. Respond to Ken Kobayashi's question. Ready? Listen again and repeat. Let's try another. Now imagine you're Emma Egawa from Seattle. Ready? Listen again and repeat. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Kana Kano from Nagasaki. Ready? Listen again and repeat. Welcome to Can Do Japanese by JapanesePod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your occupation in Japanese. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Japan. He asks the passenger sitting next to him, Ken Kobayashi, Mr. Kobayashi, are you a student? Listen to the conversation and focus on Ken's response. Ready? Once more with the English translation. 
小林さんは学生ですか Mr. Kobayashi, are you a student? いいえ、学生ではありません。投資家です。No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mark asks? Mr. Kobayashi, are you a student? Kobayashi san wa gakse desu ka? First is Kobayashi san. Mr. Kobayashi. Kobayashi san. This starts with Ken's family name. Kobayashi. 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 After this is san. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. It translates as Mr. in Ken's case. Sa n san. Note, this suffix can be used with any gender. Together, Kobayashi san. Mr. Kobayashi. Kobayashi san. After this is the particle wa. The topic marking particle wa. Wa. It marks Mr. Kobayashi as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression as for Mr. Kobayashi. Together, it's Kobayashi san wa. As for Mr. Kobayashi. Kobayashi san wa. In Japanese, it's more common and polite to address a person by his or her name and polite suffix rather than directly with you. After this is Gakusei. Student. Ga. Ku. Se. I. Gaku. Se. Next is. This. Here, it's like the R in Are you? This. This. Last is the particle. Ka. The question marking particle. Ka. Ka. This particle turns the sentence into a question. Altogether, it's. Kobayashi san wa gakusei desu ka? This literally means, as for Mr. Kobayashi, student, you are, but it translates as, Mr. Kobayashi, are you a student? Kobayashi san wa gakusei desu ka? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Ken Kobayashi says, No, I'm not a student, I'm an investor? いいえ、学生ではありません。投資家です。First is いいえ、meaning no。いいえ、いいえ。It answers Mark's yes or no question, are you a student? 学生ですか Next, Ken says 学生ではありません。I'm not a student. 学生ではありません。First is 学生 student. 学生 After this is ではありません Here, it's like the am not in I am not. It's a polite negative form of the linking verb. ではありませんではありません Note ではありません Comes from the linking verb da to be da. Altogether, it's gakusei dewa arimasen. This literally means student, I am not, but it translates as I'm not a student. Gakusei dewa arimasen. Note, the I is understood through context as Ken is responding to the question. Finally, Ken says, Toshika des. I'm an investor. Toshika des. First is. Toshika. Investor. Toshika. Toshika. After this is. Des. 
Here, it's like the am in I am. This. Altogether, it's. Toshka des. This literally means investor I am, but it translates as I'm an investor. Toshka des. Note, the I is understood through context. Altogether, Ie, gakusei dewa arimasen. Toshka des. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Ie, gakusei dewa arimasen. Toshka des. The pattern is. Ie, occupation? Dewa arimasen. Actual occupation. Des. No, I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. Ie, occupation? Dewa arimasen. Actual occupation. Des. Imagine you're Emma Egawa, a student. Ken asks you if you're an investor. Say, No, I'm not an investor. I'm a student. Ready? いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。No, I'm not an investor. I'm a student. いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. いいえ、学生ではありません。投資家です。いいえ、学生ではありません。投資家です。いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。いいえ、医者ではありません。エンジニアです。いいえ、医者ではありません。エンジニアです。いいえ、看護師ではありません。医者です。いいえ、看護師ではありません。医者です。いいえ、学生ではありません。教師です。いいえ、学生ではありません。教師です。いいえ、バリスタです。いいえ、バリスタです。Did you notice how the last speaker omits part of the response? She says, いいえ、バリスタです。No, I'm a barista. いいえ、バリスタです。When directly responding to someone's question, it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply answering, Ie. No, there's no need to say, ではありません I'm not a student. The pattern is, Ie. Actual occupation. This. No, I'm actual occupation. Ie. Actual occupation? This. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. Ie. Occupation. Dewa arimasen. Actual occupation. This. No, I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. Ie. Occupation. Dewa arimasen. Actual occupation. This. Let's review the key vocabulary. Kyoshi. Teacher. When a teacher is talking about his or her own occupation. Kyo, u, shi. Kyoshi. Note. Sensei. Is also commonly used to mean teacher, but when you talk about your own occupation, Kyoshi. Is commonly used. Engineer. 
Engineer. Engineer. Engineer. Kangoshi. Nurse. Kangoshi. Kangoshi. Isha. Doctor. Isha. Isha. Barista. 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 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say investor? Toshika. Toshika. And how Ken says, I'm an investor. Toshika desu. Toshika desu. Do you remember how to say student? Gakusei. Gakusei. And how Ken says, I'm not a student. Gakusei dewa arimasen. Gakusei dewa arimasen. Do you remember how to say no? Ie. Ie. Do you remember how Ken says, No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. いいえ、学生ではありません。投資家です。いいえ、学生ではありません。do you remember how Mark addresses Mr. Kobayashi? Kobayashi-san. Kobayashi-san. Do you remember how to say the question marking particle? And how Mark asks, Mr. Kobayashi, are you a student? Kobayashi-san wa gakusei desu ka? Kobayashi-san wa gakusei desu ka? Do you remember how to say engineer? Engineer. Engineer. And how to say doctor? Isha. Isha. Do you remember the word commonly used for teacher when talking about one's own occupation? Kyoshi. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're an engineer. Respond to Ken's question. Ready? Lee san wa isha desu ka? Iie. Listen again and repeat. いいえ、医者ではありません。エンジニアです。
いいえ、医者ではありません。エンジニアです。Let's try another. Imagine you're Kana Kano and you're a teacher. Ready? Kano さんは学生ですか<音声>いいえ、学生ではありません。教師です。Listen again and repeat. いいえ、学生ではありません。教師です。いいえ、学生ではありません。教師です。Let's try one more. Imagine you're Emma Egawa and you're a student. Ready? 江川さんは投資家ですか。いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。Listen again and repeat. いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。いいえ、投資家ではありません。学生です。This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to talk about your occupation in Japanese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Hi everyone, welcome to the Kanji Time. Today we are going to review N4 Kanji. Let's go! If you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times. These times. These are the times that are. Okay. Then. This kanji means spring. The o n reading for this kanji is shun. Like in seishun, which means youth. Boku tachi no seishun. And the kun reading is haru. Like in haru kaze, which means spring wind. Then. This kanji means daytime, noon. The o n reading for this kanji is chu, like in chu shoku, meaning lunch. Chu shoku no jikan. And the kun reading is hiru, as in hiru yasumi, meaning lunch break. Hiru yasumi ni neru. Then, this kanji means hot. The o n reading for this kanji is sho. As in, zansho, which means late summer heat. Zansho ga kibishi desu. And the kun reading is atsu. As in, atsui natsu, which means hot summer. Then, this kanji means dark, shade, grow dark, be blinded. The on reading for this kanji is an, like in, anki. Which means memorization. Anki. Kuku no anki. Nichi ga ni 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 ga si ni san ga roku ni si ga hachi ni go juni roku juni. And the kun reading is kura. Like in kurai, which means dark. Then, this kanji means day. The o n reading for this kanji is yo. Like in kin yo bi, which means Friday. And, Nichi yobi, which means Sunday. Get yobi, k a y o b i su yobi, mok yobi, kin yobi, do yobi, nichi yobi for a week. Quiz time! Say the reading of the following kanji. Haru kaze. Nichi yobi. Chushoku. 
暗記。暑い夏。Now say the meaning of the following words. 金曜日。Friday. 青春。Youth. 昼休み。Lunch break. 残暑。Late summer heat. 暗い。Dark. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. 暗いぞ。Bye bye. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. And doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed, and reach your language goals. So, today you'll learn 1. What solo language learners need to succeed, and 2. How to do self assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, The Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF ebook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture ebook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first, and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight hour day and you want to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So, what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So, that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is, if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you. And you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside, and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So, That's where self assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language, or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, 
what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment. And three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What's your reason for learning language? Is it a personal goal, a hobby, or do you have dreams of moving to a country where it's spoken? In this video, you'll learn why your reason is crucial for motivation and for your success in language learning. We'll look at the top 10 reasons for learning a language from language learners just like you. What's your number one reason for learning a language? Whatever your reason is, whether big or small, knowing it or knowing your why is crucial for success and motivation. Number one, I love the culture and the people who speak the language. This is a popular answer. Learning a language can be a great way to learn more about the culture and open up new ways to experience it. Number two, I want to understand my favorite songs, movies, and TV shows. That's right. 
Songs, movies, and shows are great ways to immerse yourself in the language. If you're spending your time learning and also immersing yourself, you'll learn faster. Number three, it's a beautiful language. Sometimes the answer is as simple as that. You have a genuine interest in the language itself. Number four, my family comes from a place where the language is spoken. This can be popular for students who have moved to a new country and might want to connect to their home country's culture. Learning a language lets them learn things about their heritage and communicate with people who can teach them more about their cultural history. If your grandmother speaks a different language from you, it can be pretty hard to connect. So a lot of people want to learn a language to connect to family members as well. Number five, I want to speak to my partner's family in their language. Similar to the reason above, perhaps you want to speak to your partner's parents or grandparents, but they don't speak your language. Not only can learning their native language let you connect with them on a more personal level, but it's also likely to impress them. Number six, I'm learning the language to impress someone. We have many students say that they want to learn a new language to impress someone in their life. This could be a teacher, a parent, a friend, or even someone they admire and look up to. It always feels good to accomplish something and have other people recognize and be proud of your achievement. And you see this very often in language learning. When you learn a new phrase or can make a longer conversation, the people around you are bound to be impressed. Number seven, a love of traveling. There's no surprise here. Many people want to learn a new language to be able to travel more. Because you can see new places and learn about different cultures, traveling is a popular hobby for many people. And what better way to connect with the people that you meet on your travels than by being able to speak with them in their native language. We have a lot of students who just want to learn some basic conversations to help them on their trips, but even this can help you day to day. Number eight, I want to live in a country that speaks the language. After traveling around, someone might discover a country that really appeals to them and they might decide they want to move there. But their language skills could use some work. Or maybe for a job or family reason, someone has to move to a new country. Not knowing the language can really make adjusting to a new home and even a new culture much more difficult. We have a lot of students who want to learn a language to help them when they move. Number nine, I just love learning languages. This is popular for people whose hobby is learning other languages. They fall in love with the process of actually studying and being able to speak in a new language. It's a huge feeling of accomplishment. Number 10, I want to open my mind and become more international. It's so important to expand your horizons and learn about more than your own culture. People around the world live their lives in different ways, and it's good to learn about them and how they interact. You never know what you could learn by opening your ears and mind to new things. Whatever your reason might be for learning a new language, as long as it keeps you motivated, it's a good one. Learning a new language is not an easy journey. It's one filled with lots of ups and downs. So keep in mind your reason and motivation for learning, whether it's so you can move to a new country or connect with a grandparent and let it push you towards success. And if you're ready to achieve your language goals, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. 
Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to power up your language? You can do this by using practical lessons that you can use in everyday life. In this video, you'll find out what it takes to power up your language right now. Imagine you're speaking a language without stopping to think. You have all the words and grammar to express what you want to say, and they're all flowing out of you as if you were a native speaker. That's when language becomes powerful. So how do you power up your language skills like that? Books and software alone won't help, but actual practical daily conversation lessons will. Native speakers that explain the conversation and teach you how to respond will power your language up. And so will these tools to help you master vocabulary and pronunciation quickly. First, power up your language with premium. This includes hundreds of audio and video lessons that will get you speaking. And you should know that we publish new lessons weekly. So on top of the current lesson library, there are even more lessons that you can learn along the way. And whatever your learning level is, we start you off with a lesson that's right for you. You can track your progress and see how much you've mastered with our site dashboard. Seeing your progress really helps you power up your language skills. It's really motivating to know that you're actually speaking and understanding a language that you couldn't before. Next, use the lesson notes. You don't get just the lessons. You also get detailed notes with each and every lesson meaning you get the complete lesson in writing and can easily follow along while you study. Plus, we've just recently upgraded them. The notes are brand new, easier to read, and work on any device, browser, or reader. Last, we have our premium study tools. As a premium member, you have unlimited website access, which means you also unlock our premium study tools. You'll get access to our 2,000-word core vocabulary list. These words are the most commonly used in everyday conversation, and they're essential to your conversational fluency. And you'll master them fast with our smart flashcard system and the word bank. You can perfect your pronunciation by reading from line-by-line -line transcripts. This means you'll have access to all the must-know words, and you'll be able to practice them with the correct pronunciation. Don't let your language learning slow down. If you're running low on motivation, power up your language learning with premium. Get all of our premium tools for studying. Just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to make consistent language breakthroughs? Here's how you do it with our advanced language learning system. In this video, you'll learn about four simple steps to make breakthroughs with our lessons. First, by breakthrough, we mean finally understanding and speaking language that you simply couldn't before. 
you finally break through. So if you're stuck at a beginner level or just aren't making much progress, this is for you. Here are four simple steps, but the first one is the most important one. Step one, accept that you need new lessons, new real life conversations, new words, and new phrases. So you're hearing something new and improving your language skills. Repeating phrases you already know won't help you move forward. That's a mistake most learners make. They stick to what they already know. But if you could start understanding more language in minutes and start making consistent breakthroughs, would you? Well, here's how you break through with our learning system. Remember, you need to have a source of new lessons and new conversations to expose yourself to language you don't yet know. So if you're listening to our new lessons, which we publish weekly on top of our existing lesson library, you're good to go. If not, start right now. These lessons get you speaking and understanding language in minutes. Here's how. Visit the site, choose a new series or learning level that you haven't done already, and start with the first lesson. Step two, listen to a new lesson and expose yourself to real life conversations. Now, you might not understand it at first, but in time you will. All the real life conversations you hear in lessons are broken down, explained, and translated right after by your instructors. Plus, you can also read along with lesson notes so you never miss a word. So now you can actually understand the entire conversation. As a listener, you'll get exposed to brand new conversations and start understanding real life conversations. So what's the next step? Step three, you'll need to start speaking and repeating what you hear. That's the best way to start speaking any language. Do it from day one. With our voice recorder available inside the lessons, you can listen to each line of the conversation and then repeat and record yourself to see how close you are to a native speaker. Finally, step four. In case you missed anything, you can review with vocab lists, quizzes, and the line by line feature. The line by line breaks down the conversation so you can hear and read each line again and again. So even if you can't catch something the first time, you can review what you heard and be able to hear it on the next listen. But remember, the most important step is the first one. You must jump into new lessons and new conversations in order to make a language breakthrough. To make your language breakthrough, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.